All right, number one. Y equals cotangent theta over 3. So y equals cotangent of one third theta. My period is, what's your formula for finding the period of cotangent? Pi over what? B. So pi divided by one third would be what? So period is 3 pi. All right, now I'm going to find my asymptotes. How do you find asymptotes of cotangent? What's always the first asymptote? And then plus or minus what? 3 pi. Okay, the period. Okay. I don't know why I drew a graph. I'm thinking sine and cosine right now. All right. So what do we always graph first? So we've got an asymptote at zero. And then I'm going to have 3 pi and negative 3 pi. So I look at that. Do I need any more asymptotes here? No. no, I got enough for two cycles. But what do I need? I need that point in the middle, don't I? So what makes sense to do here? Take what? And divide it by 2, which is 3 pi over 2. Put your dot. Remember cotangent. Are you all good on that one? Okay. You good, Mason? Are you sure? Okay, I didn't know what you did. I thought you were having a seizure or something. You're good, okay. I couldn't think of when I sent it over there. I had to like look at the curve. And mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I Number two, tangent of one third theta. So what's your um, period again? 3 pi again. Your asymptote, you would take your 3 pi and times it by what? Plus or minus 1 half, so it's going to be 3 pi over 2. Y'all good so far? I think y'all bored. We're about to challenge you. Don't, don't hold on. It's about to kill them today. The challenge is about, await, awaits us. Nick, you want to come up and teach? You sure? Yes. You good? Okay. All right. So now, I'm going to graph the what first. Okay. 3 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. And what do you know about the origin on a tangent? Is there going to be a point at the origin? Yes. yes. What's always going to be at the origin for cotangent? Asymptote. Very good. It's like you're in church unwrapping again. Just open it. Thank you. All right. That's all right. All right. Now, I need to find how many more asymptotes? One. All right. That's a lot of trail mix. But you know what? It's okay. It's a family. You've been eating that for like four days, haven't you? Since Tuesday. <laughs> all right. So I need to find this point in this asymptote right here. What's the distance from here to here? 3 pi over 2. So what will, be, what will I do to get the next point? I add what? What's 3 pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2? 3 pi. And then what comes after that? Mm -hmm. Do I have to do 3 and 4? Will you? Parker, let me see your thir third one. Derek, I'm going to see your fourth one. Mm -hmm. I know who to ask because I know you ain't doing them over there. So you better be getting the four. You about to teach your class? Mm -hmm. I gotta let the people that were not was not that were not here to see um you in action. All right, cotangent two theta. So period is pi over two. Very good. Cotangent. Your asymptote's gonna be at zero and plus or minus pi over two. Very good, Parker. We got enough asymptotes. Now we need to find this point. You divide by two. Great job. Good job. Matthew, let me see your four, please. 
I'm not going to traumatize here today because I'm about to check homework. That's something that's traumatizing. All right, number four, tangent. I will try to do a lot right now before I come around to check homework. Negative tangent. If it's negative tangent, it's a little... Yes, bud. You get a zero for your homework. You should have watched your video. I'm not that mean a person, James. You know I'm a... I was just making sure you remember Oh, I kind of thought you were here yesterday. I'm glad you told me that because I did not realize you were absent yesterday. But thank you for that update, okay? We're good. Just bring it Monday. All right. P is 2 pi plus, plus or minus pi. Very good. Good job. Are there any questions? Do y'all have any more to do? Are we good on seeking and co-seeking? Yeah. Moving on. Okay, next. I want you to turn to that. Oh, I love this. If you were absent yesterday, did y'all watch a video? Yeah. <laughs> See, if I was a real cruel pe person, I was a real cruel person. Anyway, turn to this page. I don't forget what page 13. You want a challenge? You're about to get one. Yay! Mason, you're not going to lie to this. I'm going to tell you this now. Well, I didn't ask you. It's a dictatorship. <laughs> All right. Now, I really don't know why mathematicians, you know, back in the 14, 15, 1600s, they didn't really have a lot to do. And, you know, that's when the math was new and they just came up with this. And they really did, y'all. I'm just tell you. In order to have an inverse, a function has to be what type of function? If someone says this, I'm gonna like, I will do, I will go do a handstand. <laughs> if you get this question right, because I mean that's awesome. Well, what? what <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I can't do it, the handstand, but um, I'll. Will you try? No, because I will break a bone and have to take a medical leave. Okay, what what does a function have to be to have an inverse? We learned it first semester, but it's been a long time. We don't use this word all the time, so. What? Mm. <laughs> Starts with an O. Jaden, I thought you'd get it. Matthew, dig in that mine. You got this. Here, you just ponder over it. You're not, you're not even trying to think of it right now. You're just waiting for someone else to say the answer, aren't you? I was thinking. Okay. It's a number. It's a number? It starts with O, y'all. That's a whole other situation. If we say zero at the moment, that starts with Z. Someone said it. Oh, my God, Jackson Nolan, you got it right. It has to be one to one. It has to be one to one. And that means if it's, to, I'm not doing a somersault, but I'm so proud of y'all. All right, a one-to-one -one means that none of your X's or none of your Y's repeat. You remember that? And how did you know something was one-to-one -one if it passed the what test? Not vertical line, it was the what? Okay, so here's, cracks me up. This is it. So it has to be one-to-one, -one, but think about a sine and cosine graph. Does it pass the one-to-one -one test? No, so mathematicians back in the day said it's not one to one, but we're gonna make it one to one. So they put it, they restrict it to a certain area. Why would they do it? I don't know, but they, you know, they wanted everything to have an inverse. So here we go. Um, so this first blank, the inverse sign. The inverse sine function is referred to as the arc sine function. A R C S I N, arc sine. Now you you will see the inverse sine as that notation or that notation. It means the same same thing. So either way, you know how you saw f raised to negative one meant inverse. Same thing. Sine raised to negative one. It does not mean negative one. It means inverse. Oh, it's right under it. I'm sorry. It is right there. 
also, they restricted that to a part where it does pass the one-to-one -one test. And it's restricted to, get this, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So on the unit, on the coordinate plane, where is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2? What quadrants are you dealing with? Let's think about it. Where is pi over 2 is here, isn't it? Negative pi over 2 is here. So what quadrants are, are first and fourth? This one and this one. So that means in inverse sign, your answers can only come out of the first and fourth quadrant. Okay? They restricted it to that area. Does that make sense? Now, since I put this in brackets, can can these two number two values be the answer? Yes. The inverse cosine is referred to as the arc cosine function. It is restricted to this range, zero to pi. So, what quadrants are you dealing with that? One and two. So, sine is one and four. Arc cosine is one and two. You have to think about all this when you answer questions, okay? The inverse tangent function is referred to as arc tan, and it is restricted to what quadrants? The same thing as sine, 1 and 4. But do you notice I put parentheses around this? So can those two be my answer? No. But for sine, they can be. Does that make sense? For um, cosine, it's one and two. Sine and tangent is um, one, uh, one and four. What, Colby? When's this test? Is this going to be on the test? Yes, we're covering this lesson today, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It's going to take four days to practice this lesson. And then we're having tests next Friday. Nick said, I'm, you going to be bored. I know Nick. What did you say, bud? There's no way. There's no way. Yeah, we're practicing that four yes, I know. <laughs> it takes a few people. In my years of teaching this, it takes a couple people about day three to finally sink in. Um, I got you something to build back there if you get bored, okay? I got a Ferris wheel for you to build, huh? Tangent and sine are the same, one and four. Sine and tangents, one and four, cosines, one and two. All right. Here we go. Look at this. Do you, do you see that we're going to be working backwards? Because normally these are the answers that you give, aren't they? For Tricky Tuesday. Well, now you're working backwards. So on number one, we want the inverse arc sine of one half. Okay, sine is your x or y coordinate? Y. So are you doing with pi over 6 or pi over 3? Pi over 6 family, aren't you? Now, which quadrant? Okay, sine. I just told you it comes out of quad 1 or quad what? 4. Where would positive 1 half be for sine in quad what? 1. Do you all see that? Quad 1. So you have to look in quad one. What is your pi over six family member in quad one? Pi over six isn't. That's your answer. Okay. Okay, sign. You have to think which of your reference angles, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, has a sign value one half. I put pi over six family. Okay. I told you arc sign comes out of quad one. Or quad four. So you have to look, okay, the sign is your y value. Which quadrant one or four has a y value that's positive? Quad one. Then you look, say, okay, which family member of pi over six is quad one? Of course, pi over six is in quad one, isn't it? So that's the answer. Yeah. Yes, hold on, let's do another one, okay, ready? Hold on. Arc sine of negative square root of 2 over 2. Which reference angle does that deal with that has a sine of square root of 2 over 2? Pi over, pi over 4. So I'm going to put that down here just as a note. Pi over 4. Your sine value is negative. 
Where can arc sine come out? One, quadrant one, or quadrant what? Four. four. So which one is that going to come out? Four. four. Okay. Let's think of the pi over four family member that is in quad four. That's seven pi over four, isn't it? Y'all agree? Okay. Now, but you can't put seven pi over four. Now, because in arc sine, you see this interval that says negative pi over two to pi over two? It has to fall between the value of negative one half to one half. Do you see that? How can you write seven pi over four in another way to make it fall between those two? Negative pi over four. Because if you went, okay, seven pi over four is in quad four. But instead of writing seven pi over four, couldn't you go backwards and get a negative value? So the same, seven pi over four has the same location as negative pi over four. Does that make sense? So, 7 pi over 4 does not fall between these two numbers, so you would put negative pi over 4. Okay. Not the first one. Okay, because it has a negative sign there. In quad 1, your sign is positive. Quad 4, your sign is negative. No, sign can only come out of 1 to 4 because they restrict it to that area. Pi over 4. Okay, going back to this. It says our sign can fall between negative pi over 2 and pi, uh, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So that's negative 1 half to 1 half on the number line. Just think of it like that. Okay, 7 pi over 4 is in quad 4. But 7 pi over 4, if I change that to mixed number, that's 1 and 3 fourths, isn't it? Does 1 and 3 fourths fall between those two numbers? No. So i got to write it in a way that falls between those two numbers. So, if 7 pi over 4 is in quad 4 right here, how can I write another way? Well, I can use negative direction, negative pi over 4. Because if I'm at 0 and I go negative pi over 4, wouldn't that be the same location as 7 pi over 4? Does that make sense? Okay, think of it this way. Okay, do you understand that 7 pi over 4 is right here in quad 4? Yes, you do. We've been doing a lot of... It's your unit circle, hon. 7 pi over 4. Pi over 4 is here. 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. Oh. Oh, so 7 pi over 4 is in quad 4. Yeah. Okay, I can't write 7 pi over 4 because 4 goes in 7, 1 and 3 fourths. 1 and 3 fourths does not fall in between negative 1 half and 1 half. So I have to think, okay, how can I rewrite it to mean the same thing? Well, normally we go around the unit circle like this, don't we? Well, I can go backwards. Wouldn't this be negative pi over 4? And negative one fourth does fall between those two numbers. How did you get like, one fourth at the beginning? You put it to the side. Okay, how did I get okay? So you have to think you have to think backwards. Which reference angle deals with the sine value of square root of two over two? Pi over four. So I just put that as a note right there. You know how I did, okay. So you know we've been doing like cosine of three pi over four on tricky Tuesday. You're working backwards. I'm giving you the an answer and then you gotta figure out which reference angle I'm dealing with. Does that make sense? We're going to do another one. It's going to catch on. All right, so let's look here. Sine of square root of 3 over 2. So that means your y value is a square root of 3 over 2. Am I dealing with pi over 6 or pi over 3? Pi over 3. Very good. Pi over 3. Now, this sine value is positive. Okay, our sine comes out of what quadrant? Quadrant 1 or quadrant what? 4. It's positive, so which one would this be dealing with? Quadrant 1. What is your pi over 3 family member that's in quadrant 1? Pi over 3. That's your answer. To begin with? Okay. First off, this is what I'm going to ask you. Okay. Sine. Is that your x or y coordinate? Y. Okay. So I want you to keep that in mind. So think of back to this. You just told me y. Okay? So I have to think, okay, which one of these has a y value square root of 3? So I'm basically thinking of my reference angle. So I'm going to have to think backwards. Okay, so it's dealing with sine. That's your y value. That belongs to the pi over 3 family. That's what I'm doing. Okay. All right, negative 1. That's one of your major points, isn't it? Okay, where's negative 1 at? 3 pi over 2, isn't it? But let's think about it. Arc sine has to fall between negative one half and one half. Three pi over two is one and one half, isn't it? 
How's another way I could write 3 pi over 2? That's your answer, negative pi over 2. Because I can go that way. Instead of writing 3 pi over 2, I can go backwards and write negative pi over 2. Does that make sense? And because it's in brackets, I can write negative pi over 2. He said, Mr. Shedd, what if that was a tangent? Well, I couldn't do it for tangent. It would be does not exist because what's around my tangent values? Parentheses. That, cannot, that means those two numbers cannot be my answer. Number five, have we ever had the answer three on a tricky Tuesday? Is that a value anywhere on the unit circle? So this does not exist. Okay, now we sh we've been doing arc sine, now we're going to shift to cosine. What quadrants can cosine come out of? Oh, one, nope. I don't know where two and three all come today. One and two. It's either arc sine is one and four, tangents, arc tangents one and four, arc cosine is one and two. Now, in arc, tan or arc cosine, looking back up here, I have zero to pi. Can zero and pi be my answers? Yes, because it's in brackets. Just remember that. Okay, so cosine, you're dealing with the x value. Pi over six or pi over three has an x value of that? Which one? Pi over six. It is negative. So would it, it's negative. So would that be in quadrant one or quadrant two? What family member of pi over six is in quadrant two? Five pi over six. And that's your answer. You said, Mr. Edmund, hold on now, let's go back here. I know some of you thinking that in your mind right now. This is the range zero to one, isn't it? Does five six fall between zero to one? Then that means that's okay. Colby, you good? Do you understand I got 5 pi over 6? Okay. Do you understand why it's the family member of pi over 6? Okay, cosine is quadrants 1 or 2. It is negative, so that means it's going to be in quadrant 2. So I have to find the family member of pi over 6 that's in quadrant 2. You got 1 pi over 6. 2 pi over 6 reduces, so don't have to worry about that. 3 pi over 6 reduces. 4 pi over 6 reduces. 5 pi over 6 does not, and that's in quadrant 2. 5, 6 is okay because your range is from 0 to 1. 5, 6 is a fraction that falls between 0 and 1, so that's okay. Some of y'all re now realize why I'm spending three days on this. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do number 7. Cosine. Which family are you dealing with here? Pi over what? Okay, arc cosine. Very good. It's, it's clicking over here. Pi over 4. Now, Arc cosine comes out of what quadrants? Quadrant 1 or quadrant what? 2. two. This cosine is negative. Where is cosine negative in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2? So I need to find the family member of pi over 4 that's in quadrant 2. Which one is 3 pi over 4? That answer is great because 3 4 falls between 0 and 1. So you're good. Zero. Is that a major point? Okay. Remember, cosine, co arc cosine is between quad one, quad two. Where's cosine zero at? Pi over two is your answer. And pi over two is fine because doesn't one half fall between zero and one? Okay. It's, it's fun and challenging. It's making y'all better critical thinkers. You like it, Mason? Sorry. Because you got 20 of these on your test. Oh. Next Friday. There's about 20 of these. Mm -hmm. No. Ivy, that you got about 20 of these on your test next Friday. Oh, my God. Now, I never make. Th I would never make this a tricky Tuesday. Your tricky Tuesday stays the same to me. Derek, you just throw your pencil down with me. If I made this tricky to you, you would just throw your pencil. Yes. You have a chapter on this in calculus. I'm so proud of you. You've come a long way, son. All right, here we go. Let's do. We got eight more guys, and I got. Four. What time we'll get out? Oh, let's go. Cosine negative one half. Which family member is negative one half? 
pi over 3. X values negative 1 half. Okay, would that be in quad 1 or quad 2 since it's arc cosine? 2. What family member of pi over 3 is in 2? Two? 2 pi over 3. Does 2 over 3 fall between 0 and 1? Yes, you're good. Have we ever looked at anything 2.5? No. Tangent of negative 1. Oh, so you got to think about tangent is y divided by x, isn't it? Which of pi over 6, pi over 4, or pi over 3 gives you a tangent of negative 1? Pi over 4. Okay, tangent falls in quad 1 or quad what? 4. Where would your tangent be negative? Quadrant 1 or quadrant 4? Four? 4. Now, the pi over 4 family member that is in quad 4 is 7 pi over 4. But let's look here. Tangent has to fall between negative 1 half and 1 half. 7 over 4 is 1 and 3 fourths. Does that fall between it? So how could I rewrite 7 pi over 4 to mean the same thing but fall in that? Negative pi over 4 is your answer. What now? 15? You don't have homework on this. So I'm going to pick it up on 12 on Monday, okay? Your homework's all graphing, okay? Okay, 7 pi over 4, 7 over 4 is 1 and 3 fourths. Well, that doesn't fall between negative 1 half and 1 half, does it? So I have to think, okay, 7 pi over 4 is in quad 4. How can I write it to mean the same point? Negative pi over 4. You're just going backwards. Like, you got it. What's your mom saying? Okay, thank you. Y'all have a great day. What do you want to turn